Hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show we're going to be talking about rail and style joinery and raised panels. Well I have a project coming up that involves quite a bit of uh, rail and style joinery and raised panels and I thought it might be a good idea um, to show you guys how to go about making those and including setting up the router bit. Now I have one of these here and this is a reversible uh, panel frame bit. Um, there is a bit of setup that's involved with this bit. It's not difficult but that's what this show is all about. Setting up this particular bit and making a raised panel door in essence. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is head over to the router table and we're going to want to make a setup block. Well now we're over here at the router table and the sizing block needs to be made out of a hardwood preferably and it should be out of half inch material. I've got a half inch piece of maple here, just a scrap piece that I grabbed out of the bin. And you want to set your cutter. This is your profile cutter down here. You want to set that so that the profile cutter is going to cut into this board leaving some material at the top and the bottom of your workpiece. And right about there actually looks pretty good. It's going to give us material at the top and the bottom and this top slot cutter will not be used at all in this particular operation for the setup block. Once you get the height set of the bit, you want to move your fence forward. Um, use a straight edge or a steel ruler against the bearing and bring your fence forward so that the bearing is exactly in line with your fence. We're also going to bring our fence rails in to as close proximity of the bit as we can. You don't want huge gaps left there. You want the workpiece being supported as much as possible here. So <clears throat> bring your fence in if it's adjustable. Um, bring it in and just give it a little spin by hand making sure that it's not going to contact your bit. Uh, you don't want to cut a even though it's a nice profile, you don't want to cut a profile in the edge of your fence. So there we go, we have the fence set. And like I said, just give this bit a little spin. Make sure there's no way it's going to contact our fence. And of course, uh, it goes without saying here, guys, but I'm going to say it. Do all this set up with the cord out of the outlet. Do not have this thing plugged in while you're working on it. Now that you have your setup done with your fence set, your height of your bit, run your half inch thick maple or whatever species you chose through the bit. Um, please use push blocks guys, eye protection and hearing protection during this. Uh, these machines are loud. And there we have our setup block or sizing block. Um, one thing you guys didn't see off camera is that my fences were not exactly in line. And uh, it did cause some snipe on the back end of my routing. So I've made the adjustments and corrected the problem, but it's something you guys might want to keep in mind too. Make sure that both your fences, in feed and out feed, are perfectly in line. Well, now that we have this little uh, spacing block or setup block completed, um, it's time to run through a test piece for um, our rails and styles. 
So for that, we need to adjust our router bit height again. Well, with this being a reversible bit, um, there's several different configurations that it has to be set into. And you can see here that it's cut or it's set right now so that the profile um, cutter is on the bottom of our router bit and the profile section is facing up. Now this is for the sticking cut and I don't expect you to remember all of these terminologies. Heck, I barely remember them all. But you want to set the bit height so that the profile bit cuts a small shoulder on the edge of your stock. So we're going to run a test piece through and at the back end of your stock there should be a little lip and at the front end there should be a little shoulder. It's really hard to explain without the visual. So let me set the height of the bit and then I'll show you the product that comes out and you can get that visual a little uh, easier that way. We've run that piece through and there is that little shoulder I was talking about. It sits right there on top and that little shoulder and this is the little edge or the little tongue that I was referring to um, before. We'll give you an end profile here. There is your shoulder and there is the little lip on the edge. So that's roughly um, the height setup for your bit. So now it's time to use that setup block that you ran earlier and uh, or the spacing block and we're going to head back over to the bench to do a bit of a test fitting. Well it's time now with our setup block to test our fit. So we'll just slide this in here and see how it mates and it's actually pretty good. We're level on the bottom here. It fits nice and snug. There's room in between these joints for uh, glue to get good adhesion. Lots of glue surface there. Um, I'm pretty happy with the particular fit of this joint. Um, if, if the joint were too loose, um, then you would have to add shims between the profile and the slot cutter. Um, but if the uh, fit was too tight, if these two pieces wouldn't mate together, then you would have to remove some of the shims that should be there um, already installed in your um, bit when you purchase one of these reversible bits. So. <clears throat> Now it's time, if we're going to make an actual test door here, uh, you want to start routing some of your pieces. And uh, for that, of course, we need to cut our stock. Well, this is just a uh, test door sort of thing to show you the setup. But I'm going to rip all of these pieces for the rails and the styles um, at two inches wide. Um, then we're going to cut all of the interior profiles, keeping the same setup and the bit height that we have right now, all of the interior profiles of both the rails and the styles. For those of you that don't know, by the way, the styles are the vertical pieces and the rails are the horizontal pieces. Well, you need to cut the length now of your rails and your styles. I can't tell you what that length is going to be. Um, it's up to you. I mean, it depends on the size of your door, but there is one thing that you want to remember, and that's that regardless of the length of your um, styles, your rails are going to be three quarters of an inch longer than the visible length that you see actually on the piece. And the reason for that is that the ends of your rails actually embed by three-eighths of an inch each into the routed profiles of the styles. So something to keep in mind there. But either way, 
Let's get those cut um, to whatever dimension. It's just a test door. I'm not too picky on the dimensions. And then uh, we'll route those interior profiles on the, uh, on the router table. And there I have the final lengths cut with these pieces here being for my um, styles and these being for my rails. And I've made these, like I said, three quarters of an inch longer than what I want um, the exposed dimension to be because they are going to embed in by three eighths of an inch on both of the style pieces. Um, you want to remember to check your equipment for square because at this point in time uh, it would be disastrous to have cuts that were not square. You don't want this thing racking or fitting improperly because if it fits like this, these routed edges are not going to mate to give you that nice rail and style joinery that you're looking for. Well, now it's time to change the setup of the bit to our coping cut. Now, if you remember with the sticking cut, um, we had the profile cutter on first um, with the cutter head uh, being face up kind of thing. Um, and then of course the bearing on top, etc., etc. But with this, particular cut here being the coping cut, the first thing that goes on is your slot cutter. And then after that will be your, um, your bearing. Once you get your bearing on there, then your profile cutter will then be placed on your bit. I'm having a little problems with this washer. There we go. And your profile cutter will go placed on the bit with your nut to hold it in place. And with that, you are now set for your coping cut. Uh, once you get that bit set up, install it in the router table and then we'll go over and adjust the height. The one thing here to mention um, in that last segment in my haste, I put the bearing in there with the washers on either side. Don't do that. That's going to mess up your spacing. The washers go on top and any shims that you had will go between the top edge of your bearing and your profile cutter. Well, there's the bit installed and you want to set the height so that the top edge of that slot cutter mimics the top edge of this little tongue. It should sit flush there just like that. Once you get that set, to that height. What we're going to do is set the fence again to be equal with the bearing and we're going to run through a test piece so that we can check for fit. Well here we have our two pieces. This is our actual frame piece and this is our test cut. And you slide them together. I'm happy with the fit. They, they mate really well together, but they're not aligned. And this has to do with bit height. So if your frame piece is above your test cut, this means that your bit is too high. However, if your frame piece is below your test cut, your bit is too low. So make the adjustment in your bit until both pieces mate perfectly and flush. So a couple little scraps to run through and then check for test fit. Well, now that you've got that fit right where the top and the bottom edges of your uh, test pieces and your frame pieces are flush with each other, you're ready to go. Um, for the setup that we have now for the coping cut, that cut will only be done on both ends of your rail pieces, the piece that will slide into your styles. Um, 
what you should really be doing at this point in time is you want to run some scrap material through the setup that you have now. And what that's going to do is it's going to slide into your rail pieces so that when you're doing the end routing, you're not getting tear out. Um, you really want that to be a clean route. And the last thing you want was so much material being removed. You really don't want this to be uh, busted out without giving you that clean, clean edge and the clean joint of the rail and style, especially one like this, which is a more detailed profile. So I'm going to run some scrap through the um, router table in order to get a few pieces and then I'm going to take you over to the router table and show you how to route the, um, the rails for your frame. Well, I've got kind of a square, uh, not really a jig, but it's just an aid to help me run a piece of end grain through the router table. And I've checked it for square. It's just a three quarter inch piece of MDF with two fences uh, installed on it. And this is our uh, rail piece. And it will just insert into our scrap here for the tear out and we're going to hit the uh, power on the router table and run this through for one pass and then we'll do a test fit it wouldn't hurt to run some scrap pieces through i've already done that so i know that this setup works um, but you want to do both sides of your um, rails And after routing both of the rails, we can do a test fit. And everything fits really nicely. Some nice tight joints here all the way around. It looks great in the corners. Everything's looking great. You just want to check it for square. And this is right on the money. Looks great. So now that we've checked it for square, of course, you want to cut and route your panel. And for that, what we're going to do is measure the inside here, remembering it has to go into the same groove that the rails went into. So if the rails have to be three quarters of an inch bigger, it only dictates that your panel needs to be three quarters of an inch bigger than the exposed area here. However, we're going to make it one eighth of an inch less than that to give room for movement. So I'm going to measure this and we're going to add five eighths of an inch to whatever measurement that is on that interior dimension. Well, I've installed the raised panel bit into the router table and um, uh, camera clarity or not, uh, in a lot of cases I removed the guards to show you guys I'm not running a bit with this much uh, damage potential without the guards in place. So uh, you're going to have to use your imagination on a bit of this. But I've got a scrap piece of board here of the same thickness as the panel that I'm making. And I'm going to run it through to get a bit height. Um, I've also lowered the speed of the router to run this through. Uh, I really don't want to be smoking this through at high speed. Um, you basically want to start routing at a lower profile and bring it up until the lip that is left along the edge here is a quarter of an inch thick. That's the size of the groove that the rail and style um, bits cut. So I'm going to take a couple test passes with this scrap piece and just see how we make out. And um, we're going to route this raised panel.
And with the raised panel cut, uh, it all boils down to a dry fit before gluing anything together. And the, the edges of those um, raised panels just go into that slot that our rail and style bits cut. And um, everything just should fit together nicely. As long as you don't have 10 thumbs, you should be good to go. And just like that. And of course, we'll just give that a little clamp to pull everything together, make sure we've got a nice fit, and that everything is square. And that would be all she wrote for making a style and rail joinery uh, raised panel door. And you can see there that that looks pretty spectacular. Um, we're going to glue it together. You'll put glue on all interior surfaces. And um, I'll come back and see you when that's all done and I give it a little sanding. And there you have it. A raised panel, I guess we'll call this a door, I don't know. Anyway, using rail and style joinery with a reverse bit. Um, guys, there are way more bits on the market than these ones that I've used here. Um, this one here being the reversible bit means that you only have the one bit, but you also have a bit more adjustment. If you had a two-bit system, then you just swap out the bits. They're already set up. There's no setup required. I prefer the one-bit system. It's up to you. Um, the dimensions that I've used here, other than the um, extra three-quarters of an inch on the rails for the length, which is standard in these bits, um, it's up to you how wide you want to make the rails, how wide you want to make the st styles, how big you want to make the panel, how big this door is going to be. Um, I know that this video may seem a little finicky for you and it may seem like a heck of a lot of setup, but the results are there. I mean, it's a great looking panel and I'm not just going to come out of the blue and hit you guys with, hey, let's set up rail in style. You may want to bookmark this video because coming on the show in the uh, near future will be a build that will require this kind of joinery. And um, this video is going to go a long way to helping you out with that build and also go a long way that I don't have to go through the setup when I actually start filming and editing that show. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed this. For those of you who are considering rail and style joinery. This is not a beginning and an end uh, to all as far as setups go. This is specifically for this style of bit and although the setup seems a little rustic here for my explanation, once you get into it you'll understand what I'm talking about a little more. Um, without the visual and the hands-on it's, it's difficult to explain. But it's neither here nor there. It's rail and style joinery with raised panels, and it's going to be a big asset in a project coming soon on this program. Guys, I hope that you're going to join me for that. I want to thank you for joining me again this week, and I'm going to see you again next week with yet another woodworking video.